Look, look, I don't know who was your eyebrow. Nah, man, nah, man. Look, look, look. Malachi, Malachi's in New York. That. Where's the chip, son? Where's the oh. chip? Uh, give me the, the missiles or something. Hey, Malachi Z York is going to get you tortured. He's going to get you killed, man. I mean, but if I could say this, you got it, bro. But, 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 I mean, but the, the, the man, the man. I never know that. But, I hear his brother downtown say something about Yahweh. That's why I said, yeah, but, 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 but Z York is a convicted man. pedophile. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, you know what I'm mean, saying? Everybody, so, everybody, 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 everybody get a lot of things that wrong. Nah, man. Not, not like that, bro. Because guess what? But how you teach him? Because he's supposed to be wise. What? He's supposed to be wise. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you, and you, in this society, you know what this society is. You know what I'm saying? Now, listen, in, 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 uh, in Israel, right? It's Israelites in our society, right? We're going to have women, you know, it's, it's it's with the age as early as 12, because as soon as they get the flower of their age or their period, right? They're ready to actually, you know, have children. But in this society, that that's not the case. The so called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of, he born as well. So if Malachi Z. York had, Z. York had wisdom, he would have known not to do what he did. Huh. But you know why he did what he did? If he did, I don't because know. You don't say what the Yeah, he was convicted, he bro. He acknowledged. He, he actually, he actually admitted. Because okay. it's tapes, he actually okay. admitted. Okay. All right, so in the knowledge he's saying, it's, it's, it's garbage, okay? And that's what, hey, let me get on Civil Rock 19 and uh, 20. He said 22? Right, right. Somebody get Civil Rock 19. Rock, chapter 19, 22? Yeah. Uh, this is Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 22. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. There you go. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. Go ahead. Neither at any time the counsel of sinners prudence. There you go. See, okay, York was a I'm sinner. Just, I'm here, I'm here, hold on, hold on. Let's read that again. Let's acknowledge one thing. Is Zee York a sinner? I mean, I don't is know. Brother, you ask me a question. You trying to make me force me I'm to say something again. about someone is that ain't York, speaking about itself? Is Z York a sinner? Yes or no? I mean, we're all sinners, they say. Okay. Well, you know, the scripture said that we are sinners, but the chosen elect. Yes, he is a sinner. There you go. Now, read that's what you got. This is Sirach. No, I won't. Go ahead. This is Sirach chapter 19, verse 22. Right. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. Go ahead. Neither at any time the counsel of sinners. Prudence. That's right. So the council of sinners is not prudence. Meaning the wisdom that came out of that sinner, that sinner's mouth of Z York is not prudence. It's not wisdom. Why? Because his counsel is not the counsel of the Lord, the power of the Hebrews. Okay? That he's doing his own thing. So it's not prudence and it's not wisdom. He and was doing his own thing. Right. right. And, and, and and guess what? He right. was bugged out. And he got you bugging out. No, he ain't got me bugging out. He is. I mean, I'm not I, asking I, mean, you, I'm I was telling young you. and didn't know anything. I mean, listen, I'm not That's asking all. you. I'm telling you, you're bugging yeah. out, man. Okay. And the thing is, you say you're coming in as a baby, but you're not. I ain't bugging out. I'm, I'm You ain't humble. coming up as I'm a humble. babe. You coming up as, as, as somebody who thinks he knows something. Actually, you're the worst kind. Right. The you worst say, kinds are the worst. Hold, hold, the hold, worst hold, hold, kinds. I'm not holding nothing. You ain't holding nothing up here, man. You ain't holding nothing. I'm sitting right here listening to y'all. I'm not holding anything. What's that? Um. Are you telling me don't come back? Is that what you're saying? Oh, well, he said I'm running something. He said I'm running something. Because you keep talking, you don't run this show. And ultimately, it's not for you, man. Right. To be honest, it's not for we using you. Like you said earlier, I'm an example. I'm an example. That's what right. you said. Right. That's all you are, an example. So we're not here to make you understand. We're here to use you, right? As you being judged and receiving your judgment in the sight of the Lord, we're using you, right? The edify the whole full of light. That's all it is. Right now, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. This that's is Zechariah chapter 7, verse 11. Right. But they refused to hearken. They refused to listen. Go ahead. And pulled away the shoulder. And they pulled away their shoulder. What does that mean? You ain't really listening. Although you're here and you're acting like you're listening, you're not really listening. You're bucking against the word of the Lord. You think about and you keep pushing this Malachi Z. York and his wisdom when the scripture clearly tells you the counsel of sinners is not prudence. We're sinners as well. But the counsel, our counsel, our wisdom is really not ours. It's the heavenly fathers. If I'm telling you my own wisdom and my own knowledge that I came up with, you should never listen to me because I'm a sinner. But you should listen to me if I'm speaking about what, what the Lord is saying, man. That's why I'm still but saying But Malachi Z. York is not speaking what the Lord was speaking. That's why I say he was bugging out. And if you listen to him, then you bugging out, man. You got to denounce that. You can't. That's why he said you got to you gotta be reborn. You have to denounce everything. You, you say you know you're from the tribe of Benjamin, but you're saying Malachi Z. York still out your mouth. You haven't denounced. You have to denounce everything. You say Yakub, right? You should be going according to what he said because he's your ancestor, not Malachi the York. And he was a, the prophet, the prophet Jacob, our ancestor, was just that. He was a prophet. He's the only reason why we know 
who we are today. Right. Because he called all of the son, our sons together before he died to tell them what would happen in the last days. That's right. Hey, brother. This is Zechariah. This is Zechariah chapter 7, verse 11. Right. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder. Right. And stopped their ears. And stopped the ears. Go ahead. That they should not hear. That's right. And stopped these spiritual ears, man, that they should not. Really, it's the Lord doing that. The reason why you can't get it is because there's actual angel, right? There's an angel that's shutting down your spiritual mind so you wouldn't get it. You know what I'm saying? He's stopping you from getting it. Why? Because, you know, like we said earlier, the reason why we're here, we're not here for the whole nation of Israel. All right? The Lord has sent us to speak to the Lord's sheep, the elect out of the nation of Israel. The 144,000 and the one third. From what we can perceive, you ain't a, a part of that. Why? Because you're bucking against the knowledge. And you still got this other knowledge, this other wine, this other philosophy, this other woman in your mind, right? And then it's not leaving. When I say a woman, it's spiritual woman. I know what you're talking about. Thank you. Yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Keep going. Con, verse 12. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. Right, they made their hearts, their minds as adamant stone. They're hard-headed. That's the reason why, the, you know, we can't come out in a nice way. Because the thing with our people, you know this about Negroes, yeah, you know, Spanish, know, Native Americans. Why. When you want niggas to do something, you got to come hard. Right. You got to come hard, you got to come confident, you got to know what the hell you're talking about. And you got to be able to prove what you're saying. Right. If you're coming out nice, hey, brother, uh, can you please believe what I... What <laughs> no, our people no. are not going to listen to yeah, that, man. You're right. Right. It says, yea, verse 12, yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, right. lest they should hear the law and the words which the Most High, the Lord of hosts, has sent into his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Most High. That's what it is. At the end of the day, man, listen, I'm not, I'm saying we going with the spirit. I'm not saying that there's no chance you, could, you can get it and be saved. But at the end of the man, for you to, to do that, the Lord will have to clean your no, mind. No, I'm out of y'all. Don't run me, brother. Yeah, no. That's just somebody that experienced through, you know, coming up, didn't know nothing, didn't know anything about the Bible, didn't know anything about the Quran, none of that. And I ran into one of the brothers, he took me there, and I've been studying there. When he got locked up, that's it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, nothing to no run me, bro. The only thing I had to say, man, yeah. stop studying that. Yeah, I understand. See, you I need to follow put, the Israel, like, those... bro, like, uh, Capitol Heights when they come. I know it's different sets. A lot of y'all breaking off, so I don't know who it's who. My God been sending me the first last thing couple days to, to come do, up here and look and listen to y'all. The first you know, thing yeah. you need to do, man, before, when you, you know, in a house, yeah. before you put furniture in your house, you got to you gotta clean. You clean it out. You got to yeah. clean it out. What's going on yeah. there, Malachi, Z, yo, you got to clean that shit out. Only the Lord can really do that. You got to pray to the Lord to clean that nonsense out so we can put new furniture in right. that house. Except something. I right, got so you. this new yeah. furniture right here cannot, let's go. <laughs> right quick, um, second Ezra's. I think it's second Ezra's yeah, yeah, ten. I got you, brother. Look, look. Um, I got to be tore down. Yeah. Tell you that. Um, yeah. I think it's second Ezra's. What a ten and uh, fifty. One of those, a fifty. No. Well, yeah, yeah. Bring your piece of walkers. I, I got to bring this up. Bring your piece of. Yeah. This is Psalms one and ten and nine. Yeah. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? That's right. Like, like the like the Shar was saying, you gotta cleanse yourself. And how are you gonna cleanse yourself? You gotta take heed to this word. You know what, brother? It ain't, it ain't long because I came up in the Bible. I just ain't never know nobody that knows know how to speak the truth and break the real deal of, about the Bible. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. So it ain't no, you know, I can only come what I know. You know, that's it. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Let me bring this up. Go ahead. Yeah, read all the way down until uh, 54. Oh. This is uh, 2 Ezra chapter 9, 10. 10, verse 50. Right. For now the Most High saith that thou art grieved unfainted, right. and sufferest from thy whole heart for her. So hath he shewed thee the brightness of her glory and the comeliness of her beauty. Right. Basically, man, that's the, uh, the prophet Ezra's man. He was he was crying out for uh, the, the atrocities and it's, uh, you know the condition of our people. You know, because again, this is not the first time, you know, as far as us being slaves. We've been, we've been slaves. We went on what, seven captivities? This is the seventh mm -hmm. captivity. You know what I'm saying? So we are people that's been going from slavery to slavery. And we always had prophets crying to the Lord about our condition. So this ain't nothing new. We coming back again, crying to the Lord about our condition, just like Ezra was doing. Go ahead. Second Ezra chapter 10, verse 51. And therefore I bade thee remain in the field right. where no house was built. It says, but man, because see, the Lord told Ezra, because Ezra's one of the answers. You know, he wanted answers as far as like what's going to happen in the future, prophecies. So the Lord said, you know what, fast, go into a field, right? You know, open field, 
It said wet when no house is building. Now you look at it, you look at that, and you imagine that he did that physically, but it was spiritual, okay? Because the field represents the mind, okay? The mind is also known as a garden or field. Why? Because what happens in an actual garden? You can plant stuff. Plant anything. There you go. Anything. So I'm the mind or yeah. the field right. can have what? Things planted in it. Yeah. The Lord said, go into a field in an open space where no building was wet. Read that scripture again. Verse 51. And therefore I bade thee remain in the field where no house was built. Where no house was built. Remember what I said earlier? You got a you got a building set up in your mind that Malachi is your stuff. I, you know, I, I got to listen to I'm, you. Right, I gotta get right. you got. Don't take it that personal, yeah, but it's, right. it's personal, but just listen. Right. Okay, so you got, you got, your field need to be cleaned out. It need to be empty. But there's a building already in there, and that building has to be taken down. Keep on. Verse 52, for I knew that the highest would shew this unto thee. Right. Therefore I commanded thee to go into the field right. where no foundation of any building was. There you go. Go into the field where no foundation of any building was. And that's what we're doing even right now. When we're going out here, we're preaching this word. And this, this word falls into the minds of men whom, the, you know, whatever foundation was in there is leaving or has left. Men that, you know, the scripture said, Jeremiah, uh, uh, Ezekiel 94, right quick, Ezekiel 94. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. Either you want to you wanna, you wanna cusp of rejecting everything you've learned, or you've already rejected everything you've learned, and now you're in that, 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 that no man's land, right? Seeking answers. Those are the men who are, you know, that, that we're being sent to speak to. Get it? This is Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. Right. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, right? Through the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, go ahead. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry. That mark is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding with the name of the Lord. This council set that mark in their in their heads. That, that understanding, go ahead. And 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 that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of the world. That's right. Why are they crying for all the abominations that be done in the midst of the world? Why? Because they see the stuff that America is, is selling and they're not buying it anymore. So those are the men that the Lord is, 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 has sent us to speak to in the spirit. Men that are in the cusp of giving up this, this society or have already given up the society and now they need something new. That's when the Lord sends us to push this word. All right? And that's that building. That building has to be removed so a new building can be, a new foundation can be set up in that field, in your mind. Go ahead. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 10, verse 54. Right. For in the place wherein the highest begins to shew his city. In the place or the field in which the highest is shown his city, his wisdom, not your understanding. There can no man's building be able to stand. There you go. So you can't have another man's building in your field when the Lord is trying to set up his building and foundation in that same field. You understand what I'm saying? And that's the reason why Ezra's... You know, the only one question I'm going to ask you before you came to this. You was a Christian? Of course. So, okay, so that, that's what I was saying that if a person wasn't a Christian, Christian and been coming up in something and believed in something all his life, it's just like going to a party, you listening to music and the music start feeling good to you, so you adapt to it. So people ask you, waking up, different than, you know, not no Israelite, waking up, right. living a life, believing in something, and then when they get something good in their life, and something happened good for them, then they think that they being blessed with, I mean, I don't know what to say is that uh, uh, the God of the 12 tribes of Israel still blessing them in spite of what they fall in? Or? Yeah, but, but the thing is, remember, um, right quick, um, that's why I was asking, did you come to this because no, at I'm, the I'm, beginning I'm you answer. loved the Bible because you could have been Muslim or? Wait, I'm going to answer your question. That's a good question. Because the thing is, is that what help changed, I'm saying, what changed you? You know I'm, what I'm saying? I'm gonna give an answer. I'm gonna answer, and I'm really gonna give you a general answer. You know, me personally, it's a little different. I mean, ultimately, the, the spirit took over. But when you talk about, you know, people like you said, I like the point that you made as far as people in Christianity they're still getting blessings, right? But remember, they're getting physical and carnal blessings. Mm. The Lord gives out spiritual riches and spiritual blessings. All right, so. So, you know, you ever heard of a, a blessing that could be a curse? Yeah, I got you, yeah. This is the thing. If you're being blessed 
people worldly things, that's actually what end up being a curse for us. Mm. So a lot of these Christians out here, you know, you know, eating good and all, that's actually gonna turn out to be their downfall Even because if they bless that's them it. all that they right. just they get blessed with it's the right. earthly things. There's blessings and actual yeah. curses, but it ain't all about that. That inner, I got you. There you I go. got you. you. Got it. You got I got you. Yes, so that's the difference. So I can get them. People can get them confused. They get confused. I see. I but see. It's all a trap. Because hey, so look, Satan, Satan controls all these other religions, and Satan got to. He got to keep feeding you, man. Like that's, what? I think that's when the um, they said a third of them angels came down and nah, formed nah, all nah, these nah, different. Nah, nah. But did you know what I heard? Nah. Over how all the angels came here and formed all these different religions. Yeah, it's garbage. That's not you, you no, saying. It's that's garbage. garbage. Yeah, it's garbage. Not angels. The, the, the religion. Well, I mean, let's. I'm be honest with you. It's what you're saying. It's true in the sense that when you say angels, angels are spirits. Now, right. religions. Thought, thought. Just, just let me hear me out. Angels are spirits, okay? And you have angels on the right hand side, right? Angels of the light, and you have angels of the darkness. The angels of the darkness are called demons, okay? They. Those spirits come up with doctrines and those doctrines become religion. So and what you're saying is true, but we have to properly break that down. Break it's that down. not that angels actually came down, no. But it's spirits that, that come down and jump in people's minds and teach them doctrine. And that's and how that's you don't get them. Being religions. around y'all, falling out, that's the only thing I would just probably have a dip because it's like I'm I'm looking, I'm looking within my own self. A lot of actions that I do, I do it. I don't believe that nobody possessing me to do anything. Well, I think it's um, that that choice. No, the no, choice with that, that good and that evil and that that nah, negative. Nah, you don't nah, think so? Nah, Break nah, that down for me, fam. Goes the free will. Break yeah, that. Yeah, that's why I was saying yeah, free will. I was saying the free will to do even live right or wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why I say I don't feel nobody jump into to make me have a choice to rebel. That's the Lord. So, so his, in, a, in a nutshell, he's got to be Okay, that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, because I I ain't think nobody controlling me for whatever. There's a there's only there is there's no there is no free will. There's only appearance of free will. That's how the Lord set it up. No free will. There's no free will, even though there appears to be that you make those choices. I mean, think about it. The book, the book, the whole book, right? From Genesis to Revelation, it's speaking about beginning and the end. It speaks about everything. It breaks down everything that's gonna happen from the beginning to the end. What about the bird of Atlantis? Well, like before uh -huh, hear me out. Genesis. The book of Revelation is the end. That book has been written. Yeah, the Revelation. Right, right. But remember, ba ba the whole book of the end, how things are gonna end, is already written, and we haven't. But, he, but we haven't even lived through it. That means that every step of the way, from here on out to the end of the book of Revelation, every step of the way has already been, been written. Whatever you're gonna do tomorrow, it's already been written. Everything has already been written. Why? Because the beginning and the end were already written. So now we just gotta live it out. You don't. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not. It's the appearance, like the brother says, the appearance of free will. But ultimately, God has got everybody on puppet strings, man. Because I'm asking. That's the reason why I came to ask you a question. Like you say, I was talking though because I got a book. No, I got some books on let's bring some Adam precept. and Eve. Before. I know, I know. But let's bring some precepts to back up what I just back said. Back up. Okay. Good. This is uh, this is Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. All right. A man's goings are of the Lord. Read that again. So this is Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Right. A man's goings are of the Lord. Right. How can a man then understand his own way? There you go. A man's goings is of the Lord. Every step of the way, man. The Lord programs you to do whatever it is that you're going to do. Bro. Right. And that happens when you go to bed that's, and you, you close know what? your that, eyes. That's kind of like if the Lord planned. Well, this, the, no, reason why I say that, reason why I say that, if the Lord planned everything for me brother, to do, brother, brother. that means I got you, I, I got change. you, I got you. Just okay. listen to this. Okay. Job chapter that's 33, kinda, yeah, yeah. Job chapter 33, verse 14. Right. For the Most High speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Mm -hmm. In a dream, in, in a, a dream. vision of the night. Right. When deep sleep falleth upon men. Deep sleep, you know what deep sleep is. Yeah, yeah, you, well, you can be you sleep not, or you I'm can be sleep now. Deep. I can be sleep I'm now. I'm talking about actually when you go okay, to bed. Boy, okay, right? In slumberings upon the bed. Right. Verse 16. Right. Then he openeth the ears of men mm -hmm. and sealeth their instruction. There you go. See, when you sleeping, he's opening up. He's, he's, he, that's when he's working on your mind. And he's sealing your instruction, like I said, puppet strings. Uh -huh. So he set up how what you're gonna do the whole day. Now he might have situations where you put little thoughts that you know you'll say, well, listen, you know what? Today I feel like I feel like wearing green. You know what I'm saying? I feel like wearing green shoes. But you ultimately you went 
Last minute, you like, nah, let me pick up these sisters. Oh, you know, whatever color that, 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 color, color that is. When you decided to, to make that decision, that's because you went to sleep. Go wrote all of it. He already put all the instructions that you was going to wear. Right? Exactly everything that you was going to do. He set it up that you was going to come in today. Can I get a scripture about that? Yeah. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 30, verse uh, 21. I, I still got to grab that. Right, right I'm starting at Isaiah 30 and 20. Right. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity mm -hmm. and the water of affliction, Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers, and thy ear shall hear a word behind thee. And thine ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. That's right. When I used to sell drugs and doing little crazy things back in the day, don't you saying that the Lord... Uh, 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 uh. That wasn't my choice? No. no. Um, a Romans 8 and 20. So, oh, oh, so you saying that he allowed that to happen for got, me to got, be? Yeah, yeah. Romans 8 and 20. To learn from my mistakes or something? Because that, that right if that, well, absolutely. This is the thing. To be able, to be able, listen, to be able to um, understand the light and the importance of the light, you know what has to happen? You have to get into the darkness. You have to practice. You know, you got to get into, you know, wickedness. You know, it just has to happen. Because once you, once you experience wickedness by doing wickedness, selling drugs and all that, now when you come out of it, you go back to the light and being a so-called good citizen, you know what's good and what's evil. Because you have to have the knowledge of what's good and evil. You can't know what's evil if you haven't done evil. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why that's the reason why the Lord allowed us to do evil so we can learn about evil that bring us back to the good. So now so we can judge, right, all the nations. Because you can't judge if you don't know the good and the evil. That's the reason why we all experienced these things and have done these things before we came back to the light. Bring it out. This is, uh, this is Romans chapter 8, verse 20. Now hear this. Romans chapter 8, verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity. The creature is the Israelite man. So called Negro, Spanish, Native American. That's the creature. The creature was what? The, for the creature was made subject to vanity. Subject means uh, under rule or slave. You know, meaning under control of vanity. Vanity is anything that's uh, uh, against the scriptures, which vanity leads to sin. Okay? So the Lord made you under control of sin. Why? Right? For the creature was made subject to vanity. Right? Not willingly. Not willingly. It wasn't your choice. See that? It wasn't your choice. Read that again, man. We talking about free will. Read that. Go Romans chapter eight, verse twenty. Right. The creature was made subject to vanity, right? Not willingly. Not willingly. But by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Who was to him? It's the Most High. The reason why he controlled you and made you put you in that situation is so that what? So that now, if you are part of the elect, you can come back and have hope, hope in His Son. So his son will forgive, you know, through his son, you do the sins will be forgiven. Now you will have knowledge of both what? Uh, 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 light and darkness, right? Good and evil. And then you can become the real judge and judge the planet, man. And that's what we do. We're going to be the kings, priests, and judges of the planet. That's why we've experienced all these things, selling drugs and so on and so forth. So we sitting there on this side in the light telling you, yo, we know what that's all about. That's going to get you put to death, man. Okay, so come back out of the darkness and come back to the light and become what? One of the gods in the universe. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So in 1 Samuel um, 16 and 7, it's where it says the, the Lord looketh upon the heart. Mm -hmm. um, talking about uh, how, how the Lord judges people. Can you break that down? Bring your priest. Call it. What's that? First. Samuel 16. Yeah, 1 Samuel 16 and 7. I feel like it fits with the ongoing conversation. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because that's what it is. I mean, because remember, oh, Romans 10 10. Because um, uh, somebody grab Romans 10 10. Because, like you said, brother, it's, it's all about the mind. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the mind. But it's also having understandings, it's levels to it. You know, on the lower level, on the lower level, the Lord said, I put between you life and death, choose life. But we all know, if, if the Lord already set up 140, you said, listen, 144,000, 12,000 for each tribe, if you're not part of the elect, man, you're going to make the wrong decision. 
ultimately you're gonna make the wrong decision. There ain't nothing you can do about that. Like I woke up today, man, I was like, I looked at some of the things and I felt like, man, you could have done better for the truth and all that, you know? And if you feel like, man, you know what? There's nothing I really could have done. I did it, it is what it is. If I'm not a part of the elect, ain't nothing I can do. All I, all I have is faith and hope. I thought the head of Satan just had the to money too. Because that's about it. When, uh, uh, with, uh, but you know what you wrote? Know, Friday you said the devil will end it. Um, hold what you got so we can answer the question. This is Romans 10. Let's get that sandwich first. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 7. Right. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature. Like look at his countenance, why? Because at this particular point, the Lord is uh, looking for uh, a king, king of Israel. So he sent he sent Samuel to the, uh, the house of uh, Jesse. Okay, uh, Jesse, who was Jesse? Jesse was the father of King Richard, you know, known as King David. Back then, just David. All right. So so Samuel's looking at all the uh, David's brothers. You know, he's looking at David's brothers, and some, you know, they showing up warriors from birth. You know, strong, tough-looking guys. The Lord is like, nah, pass up on that guy. So his brothers just keep coming through. They keep coming through. It's like, nah, pass up. And then eventually the Spirit of the Lord said, none of these sons of Jesse in that house are chosen. But there's one, but he's not in that house right now. So that's when Samuel asked Jesse, well, where's your other son? That's where Jesse told now uh, David, the young David, he's in the field, you know, being a shepherd to our, you know, to the sheep. But David wasn't a physically impressive, you know, David wasn't the tallest man in Israel, he wasn't physically impressive, but it was all about the mind and the spirit of that man. Because the Lord knew them other, them other brothers, they weren't white. What? Huh? Because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. There you go, I have refused him. So you're looking at this, this guy, he's one of the brothers of uh, uh, David, right? And the Lord is like, no, I have refused him, Mark, because his spirit, you know, the Lord is not, it's not, the Lord has his spirit is not chosen, right, to, to, see, to sit on that seat, man, of being the king of Israel. Okay, why? Because to be a king of Israel, you got to be a judge, you got to be humble. A lot of the things that, that David went through, not anybody could go through that, only David could go through that, man. Okay? I know you had a piece of yeah, yeah, right. This is St. John chapter 7, verse 24. Right. Judge not according to the appearance, right. but judge righteous judgment. This is St. John chapter 7, verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Right, and righteous judgment is according to uh, the spirit now. You know, that, was, that was the point. Yeah, bring that up. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. Right. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So when the Lord looks at us, like right now we standing right here, now of course the Lord sees us physically, but that's not the Lord is spirit, right? The scripture said the most high spirit, so he must be worshiped in spirit and truth. So the Lord is first and foremost ultimately looking at our essence and our spirits. It's like candles, it's like it's like flames, you know. We right now it's just like a bunch of flames just standing, right? And, and it's heat, and, and it's heat that that massive heat is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is right here, right now. You know, it's bouncing off brothers. It's bouncing off other spirits, right? And that's what it is. A huge flame with a small little flame standing. Yeah, the Lord said that he was in uh, Zechariah. He was going to search Jerusalem with candles. With candles. Yeah, get that. Um, uh, Zephaniah. Uh, Zephaniah. Yeah, Zephaniah 1 and, one and uh, 12. Yeah, I got to I'm not mistaken. Because that, that scripture in Zephaniah 1 and 12 is talking about us. Because 12 and 1 and 7, it's 1 and, I think it's probably oh, 1 and 12. 12. 12. 1 and 12? Yeah, yeah right, 1 and 12. Read, uh, this is Zephaniah 1 and 12. Right. And it shall come to pass at that time. That will search Jerusalem with candles. I will search and punish the men that are settled on their lease. And punish those Israelites that are where all these sellouts and Israelites that love America, that mm -hmm. love this world, man. Yeah. They're gonna be punished. Okay? But he's gonna search with candles. The spirits. Okay? That's what it is. That's what we are. We are we are we are candles. Right, right. The scripture says that what we we in, in the gross darkness, we are the light. Well that matches up with Matthew's work when you Howard Shot told us. Uh, the man don't take a candle. That's put right. It on the the table, it puts it on top of the, the house, you know, basically right. on top of the table so the whole house can be lit. That's right. That's right. Uh, scriptures also say in Psalms that he makes his, his angels, his ministers, are a uh, flame of fire. There you go. You know? And another word for angel is a messenger. That's right. And we're the messengers of Yahweh Shin Yahweh Shah. You know? That's right. Huh? That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead.
finish it off. Be loud. Man. Back in Samuel's. Samuel's chapter 7. That's so like 16 and 7. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Right. For man looketh on the outward appearance. Right. So man is always looking at, uh, how, look at how tall it is there. That's a big, that's a big dude. Well, why do you think that Israel was shook when they seen uh, Goliath? Yeah. They seen that dude, it's like, whoa. We thought Saul was big. Cause remember, Saul was the tallest man in Israel. Hey, he went no, no Goliath. Goliath was nine, nine, six. Nine feet tall and six inches. That's how tall the dude was. He was massive. All right? So when they seen that, they, they, got, they got shook, right? Because they were looking at the physical and the outward appearance, right? For man looketh on the outward appearance, right? But the Lord looketh on the heart. But the Lord looks in the heart. Now, what is the heart? The heart, the heart is the mind. Okay. And the scripture tells you what is that? Um, as a man thinketh, so, so, so is he. So, so David, David was a man of humility, but very humble. He was very humble. Hey, you see the mother brothers? Actually, one of uh, one of David's brother was a freaking asshole, man. Because when David showed up to the battlefield, he started talking shit to David. About like, why are you here? You here because you noisy and, and you just want to see the battlefield. And like, you be there, you like, what the fuck is wrong with this nigga, man? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, because cause that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, you know, because brothers, when you read these stories, don't read it like it's a form, like it's a, it's us. Mm, it's like right. you know a nigga like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. You know a nigga like that, man. So get into it, man. Merge. Be one with this, with this, with the, with the stories, man. But picture it, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got this word be moved in different ways, though. Some people, you know what I'm saying? Like they say, John. John had that, uh, that spirit of, like, uh, who was it? Peter. Peter John. had that spirit. When they say Peter had that spirit of, you don't like the white cut off one of the Romans, uh, yeah. Like he had that spirit of, not really humble, you know what I'm saying? Nah. Like that rock. Nah. That was wrong. Nah. That was wrong. You're not, you're not, you're not. I'm listen, I'm listen. I'm hey, hold up, hold you gotta listen. See, you, you, the things that you say, you don't know what you're saying, bro. Peter made his mistakes, because remember, there's, there's two stages in this truth when you come into this truth, right? You got the stages at the stage, the disciple stage, and then you have the apostle stage, all right? When you're a disciple, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. It doesn't mean that you're not humble. You're gonna make a lot of mistakes because you're a disciple, you're still learning. When he made those moves, he was still a disciple. The okay, spirit, then how did you look at me when I first came in? You, look, you looked at me well, like you're not a disciple. That's why I looked at you the way I looked at you. You know what a disciple is? It goes back to the word discipline. You're having to listen, and to be disciplined, you have to be humble. You have to be quiet and not with all that back and forth, a disciple wouldn't do that. That's why I, I didn't look at you as, okay. as a disciple. Right. It's Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Right. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's right. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Right, and the scripture tells you that what? What comes out of a man is what defiles a man. Not, not, mm. not what goes in, but what mm. comes out. Because when you're saying things, it's a reflection of what's going on in your mind. You know what I'm saying? So that's, and that's just the reality. So does that, you know. No, no, because the, the brother brought up, the, you know, the question about. Let me see if you can take it a little bit different, uh, uh, deeper. On what the aspect? Spiritual, on the spiritual aspect? Well, I mean, it is the spiritual aspect. What do you, what do you see about it? What was the question? What, as far like, as the, Ask the question one more time. The question was in 1 Samuel 16 and 7, right. where the Lord says, he looketh upon the heart. Can you break it down? I want to make sure I understood how the Lord looks upon the heart. Because you said that you looked uh, at a man's power. That's according to his mind. That's, you know, according. that's according to, he looked, because remember, in John, go back to John 7 and 24 again. That's why I brought that precept yeah, out. Because the scripture said, um, don't judge according to appearance, judge righteous judgment. That's why the scriptures like 1 John, the fourth chapter, where it says, uh, 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 try 